Yeah. Okay, so again, thank you for a warm welcome. Uh, my name is Alexander Zdip, um, privately. I'm personally, I'm an enthusiast of free software. And professionally, I work with embedded devices, IoT devices, uh, industry 4.0 devices. And for the last four years, I was interested particularly in security of these devices. Uh, okay, this is my second time here on Froscon speaking. So thanks to hosts and all the crew for inviting me and holding this, this event. It's very, very nice every time. So uh, let's start. Uh, the topic today is Internet of, of Things, Novelty and Comfort versus Security. So I think that we all kind of understand what Internet of Things devices are, but let's look at it more focused in more details and especially let's see what are the benefits but also what is the compromise we, we need to agree, especially in terms of security, uh, to use them. So today we're going to talk about what is Internet of Things in case it's not yet well understood. Uh, I'm probably not going to explain it because it's still just ongoing topic and there are, I believe there are no real experts in, in this uh, branch. So then I will show you some uh, vulnerabilities of these popular devices, hazard strengths then they, they create, and then finally how to provide security and solve most common problems. Uh, and in the end, we can have some discussion or questions or let's see. So the first question here is if every device connected to internet is already IoT device. So Internet of Things, it's not recent term. It was first used by Mr. Kevin Ashton in last century. Uh, he was describing Procter and Gamble's uh, supply chain and it was just RFID devices speaking to each other. And that was it. So how do we define Sorry about that. So uh, currently, Wikipedia defines Internet of Things as a concept according to which devices can store, process, and share data with usage of computer networks. But I think this is too general. It, it can be true for virtually every device which is uh, connected to, to, to kind of network. So let's look at other. Uh, Mr. Andy Rose. Um, IoT expert, uh, enthusiast, and researcher says it's allocation of virtual presence to physical objects. And that's more like this. So um, comparing to Internet of non-things, the Internet of humans, let's say, we can agree somehow that Internet of Things is about devices which themselves produce data, information, and consume them. And there, there is no need for human. Of course, human can be at the beginning of the chain or and, and the end of the chain. But in the intermediate state, there are only devices which produce and consume each other's data. And that's, that's the difference. So no, I don't believe that every each device connected to internet is internet of things. I believe that it needs to have this feature of producing data on its own or consuming data on its own without needing human to interface with it. So let's see how does it look in practice. So 
what especially manufacturers, well, what they like to call Internet of Things for different reasons, because they really be, be believe that this is Internet of Things, or maybe they just want to market this this way, but let's see. So let's start with very simple stuff. And one little disclaimer at the beginning, I'm showing uh, concrete devices, uh, but I'm not talking about them really, so this is just illustration of a group of devices. So first group is just very common, normal stuff like uh, connected buttons which can be programmed or power outlets, nothing really special, but this is already Internet of Things. Uh, then toys, and these toys nowadays can also uh, connect to Internet and sh share some data to receive some data. For example, some toys can react on time of the day. They can react on the weather conditions outside and so on. So this is very, very nice. Sometimes it's uh, for edu educational reasons. Uh, there is uh, some research, not this toy presented, but uh, security researchers were able to hack one of such devices and make it swearing in front of the users. Um, so let's see what's next. Something more uh, of real stuff. So this is here aid, which is connected. Um, it can connect, for example, directly to doorbell. So it doesn't need to amplify the real do doorbell, but instead it can just play the sound of the doorbell uh, directly. It can pair uh, to phone, or it can react on changes in the environment to adjust its settings. Very nice. Uh, today, just before my presentation, there was also mentioned this Peacemaker defibrillator, which is also uh, kind of IoT because it, these devices, these types of devices have telemetry. It also was mentioned that they virtually have no security, no encryption. So, yeah. You can see that uh, the um, appliances may be really serious sometimes, uh, sometimes less serious or more serious, depends on person. Uh, you have some uh, robo drink. You can order drinks using your phone, for example. That's just for fun, probably. Uh, barbecue must have. Uh, so this little device can uh, measure the Mm, level of gas in your container, what can go wrong. Uh, what can go wrong is a rifle. Uh, of course, I'm not going to say that if you hacked this device, you could pull the trigger of this rifle, but researchers were able to mislead auto-aiming and targeting aid. And this scope, not, not rifle, is helping to track target, and attackers were able to change the target while aiming. So this is kind of scary already. Uh, something for the youngest. Uh, this is probably a nice device. It can help track vital functions of your baby. Uh, probably very good for most of parents maybe for some only, but there was already a story on the internet that uh, parents were scared to see notification on their phone that the vital function of their babies disappeared, only to find out that the toddler just dropped the sock. Uh, so, uh, something which is probably not only for teenagers, uh, just wonder, you can connect it to your phone, hopefully not directly to Facebook to just announce to everybody. Um, this is something which uh, I believe, and this is what, where I work. I work in industry and agriculture, IoT. Uh, so I believe this is one of the appliances which makes most sense, agriculture, where uh, IoT devices 
all the tractors, harvesters, trucks, and so on are connected to each other, speaking uh, to each other. What are the crops? What are the fuel levels? What are the engines condition? This helps a lot in industry. Um, this is something for gardening. Uh, you can schedule uh, sprinkling your grass and so on. Nothing really special, but yes, another stuff. Uh, this is something you know. There is no thing to be excited about. You had laugh about it last year, but how about this? This is something uh, which is virtually um, Fitbit for men. Uh, it measures. It's set to. To, to measure uh, man's performance and synchronize it with a profile on phone. Uh, I don't know if it posts it to the dating uh, portals or not. Uh, just idea. Okay. Something which is, again, serious or not, but there is IoT bank, or at least they want to create one. Okay, so we are using e banking for like 15 or 20 years now, so what is special about this one? Um, if you overspend somewhere in a restaurant, for example, it's going to connect to your thermostat and turn down your temperature so you can save money. So to sum up, uh, it's all around us. It's in every branch of our life, smart home, wearables, communication, industry, energetics, healthcare, everything. So if you like it or not, it's all around there. Even if you don't buy it yourself, if you don't employ it yourself, it's your neighbor, it's your colleague who does it, and you, cannot, you can't just do anything about this. Uh, a few examples, what have already, what has already gone wrong uh, about these devices. Uh, what's that? Uh, so th th there's first example. Okay, so can we have some help, please? I'm not sure what's happening. It's again wrong screen or what? Sorry about that. So you know what can go wrong about devices already, but about specifically about uh, IoT devices. So there was uh, some topic on Reddit last year that refurbished IP cameras, the previous users were still able to connect to the new users' devices. Uh, this might be... Uh, a little problem, but sometimes it may escalate. So let's see what's next. So sometimes owners of pets decide to leave them at home and go for vacation or whatever. And there are these nice devices which can take care of the pets, at least feeding them. But there was a case where some servers were malfunctioning and this disturbed feeding animals. Uh, and it may also apply to people because a bug in a thermostat um, caused a draining battery which then uh, the, the devices just didn't work. And another case also with thermostat during the heat wave um, they just had a bug somewhere in servers and they didn't work again. So if we, uh, if we depend our comfort or life even sometimes of the pets for these devices, we, may, we, we, we have to know what are the, the hazards there. Um, 
Another device, I've already shown this, it's, it doesn't matter w w which exactly it is, uh, all of them behave uh, the same and have security implemented or lack of security implemented the same way. So this device had a Wi-Fi hotspot for uh, easy setup, but there was no, uh, there was only weak password on this hotspot and there was no encryption in local networks and no encryptions, no encryption in uh, communicating with the cloud. So every uh, neighbor could possibly uh, switch lights off for us or whatever. Uh, another story, known brand, two years in a row, hacked cars. Uh, attackers were able to take over steering and brakes in a car. In the next year, luckily, it was only with physical access, but sometimes that's not even a problem. Um, very recent story, at some university, there was 5,000 devices hacked to execute uh, DNS requests about seafood, why not? So what's special? It's special because vending machines, light bulbs, light posts were involved. So these devices were hacked to break down networking on this uh, university. Again, this is from like a few weeks before. Uh, ransomware installed on coffee machine. So the story was like a technician called remote admin that the um, monitoring system in petrochemical factory, a huge one, was attacked by apparently a ransomware. And the admin replied that's impossible because we have completely separated network. And the technician came to the kitchen to take some coffee, not only to notice that the coffee machine displays the same error, I mean the same message of the ransomware. So what turned out to be, uh, so yes, there was separated network for, um, for the monitoring system, but someone connecting a uh, coffee machine to internet also connected it to the separated network. So coffee machine was a bridge between separated corporate network and internet. And this machine, this is probably probable, uh, was just infected by ransomware and then spread it to the meant to be separate net network. Funny story or not. Uh, okay, so IoT Village of DEF CON, this is data from last year. It was only recent that it, uh, in this year, so there, there, there are no summaries yet, but the data is interesting. Anyways, so uh, 47 vulnerabilities in 23 devices of 21 manufacturers. So one of the most interesting ones, thermostats. There was live demo of hacking a thermostat. Uh, ransomware, so if you want your house to be heated or cooled down, you need to pay because otherwise uh, you will not have your uh, air conditioning. Door locks, that was a disaster. Almost every single door lock available on market was hacked for different reasons, like password were plain text, plain text and transmitted without any encryption. Uh, one of the device just opened the door when receiving a uh, distorted packet. Uh, so, and recent story from this or previous months was that there was an upgrade of one of these door locks and it happened that it bricked devices. Luckily, uh, the manufacturer claims that you can always use physical key, but if you can break, break brick even devices, uh, we've just updated there's something which gone wrong. Uh, solar panels, attackers were, had taken over one of the farms. Uh, they could disable it. They also claimed that they could uh, steer it in this way that they could damage it. 
wheelchairs. Uh, there are wheelchairs which are somehow connected, which can be remotely controlled, uh, and these were also hacked. And some security measures were disabled, like um, speed limit and so on. On some devices, attackers were even able to take control. So that, that's scary. And some attacks on larger scale uh, to gigantic, really, DDoS attacks from last year. Uh, Krebs on security was attacked. This was one of the biggest DDoS attacks in history, and it is believed that significant, significant contribution of uh, IoT devices was there. And the devices were like uh, TVs, VCRs, and so on. And the same, uh, the same situation with Mirai attack on DIN.com. Um, it touched users mostly in US, but some of the uh, some of us could also suffer from it in Europe. Um, again, it is believed that IoT devices played significant role within this attack. So, why? Why the problems? Why? <laughs> this device has no network connection whatsoever, I promise. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Maybe, in between. But that was not in the script. Okay, thank you. So, uh, why the problems? Because there are so many attack vectors in these devices, so you can hack them through the web interface. Mobile interface, administrative interface, uh, you, they can be hacked by the other devices in this ecosystem. They can be hacked through cloud connections because some of them don't uh, encrypt it. They can be hacked or destroyed by update mechanism. And because most of them allow physical access, maybe not in your home, but maybe in safety infrastructure like uh, street lights even. So there are some numbers, let's see on, let's have a look at research from HP Enterprise. They claim, and you can see it in the uh, attached PDF, that 90% of devices gather information about environment, and at the same time, 80% of them raise doubts about security. That's a lot, that's really a lot, and that's scary. 70% uh, devices do not encrypt communication not local, nor in the cloud. Uh, and again, 60% of devices have web interfaces which are prone to attacks, and updates, updates are not encrypted, and probably also not signed to be sure what they download. So another research, this one is from Symantec, I believe, uh, so, most common credentials for IoT devices. So, there's no wonder they are so easily taken over. Uh, another research from PwC. Uh, this is a security survey they, they, they have among um, IT directors and so on. Uh, people which have something to say in their companies about uh, security and IT and everything around. And they revealed that only 35% of the, these companies have IoT security strategy, and 28 is going to have one, maybe, sometime. Uh, another scary research. So this is not uh, directly related to uh, security, but in Cisco's survey, it's revealed that 
three fourths of IoT projects are failing. And uh, they are failing not because of security reasons, but what I wanted to point here, that if the market is so harsh, so difficult, there is no wonder that sometimes, and that's really most of the time, uh, it's tempting to just neglect security. So if there is so many problems, who needs IoT again? And the answer is everybody. We need them uh, because they are fun, because they're helping us. They help us uh, be, have more comfortable life. They help us earn more money. They help us feel more rested, whatever. So there's really one answer. Almost everybody needs IoT. But then why criminals need IoT? And there's also just obvious answer that this is for money, but how they earn money on IoT. So first, industrial espionage, so spying on companies. If some companies is equipped with a lot of IoT devices which are easily hacked, it just helps to compromise network and finally get into other devices personal data of the users, and this might be all of us, like we have some biometrical devices on us which count our steps, which count our, which measure our heart rate and so on. This, this data, if stolen, may have really great impact on, for example, what insurance we are offered and how much does it cost. Maybe there is no examples, maybe there is no disclosure at this point, but if it doesn't happen right now, it will happen in the near future. So uh, something uh, which is kind of obvious, uh, and it was, you don't need IoT devices for this, but this is just another way. Uh, Bulgari spying on potential victims, like is the user, uh, user, is the potential victim at home or, or so. Uh, so these devices also uh, store some credentials. Some of them even store credit card numbers and so on. And they are easily hackable, so this is just easier to steal credentials from them. Uh, again, botnets, if these devices can do arbitrary uh, internet requests, they can easily become part of some botnets uh, or to spam or whatever, and ransomware, we've already seen this on at least two slides, that if these devices are taken over, they may just um, extort money from users because they want their, their houses to be heated or cooled down or whatever. So why this, why the criminals prefer IoT over hacking and compromising other devices? Mm. First of all, IoT devices are easier to find because most of the time they just announce their presence uh, either by uh, having some signals over Wi-Fi or Bluetooth or other uh, transports or you can just see them because uh, they are attached to wall, they are attached to uh, street lights and so on. They are easier to compromise. Because most of the time they are small with low computing power, with low performance. They cannot afford running uh, antivirus. They cannot afford uh, running firewall. So it's just easier to hack them, to get into them. They are easier to manage also because they have multiple uh, interfaces most of the time. They can have web interface, they can have mobile interface, some of them has, have uh, telnet or SSH or whatever, so there's just, this is just easy to manage them. And um, in contrary to our laptops, for example, they work just 24 by seven. So even if we had our laptop uh, compromised, if we close it, if we shut it down, if we put it to sleep, it just won't 
spam people or it will, it will just not uh, take part in uh, um, DDoS attack. But the devices, the Internet of Things, these devices are most of the time just working. You normally don't uh, completely shut down your uh, garage gate or your bulb or you don't completely power off your TV. So they, they just work. And they don't most of the time disclose the fact that they were hacked because most of the time there is no, no screen there. For example, in uh, door lock or uh, doorbell on, or garage gate or whatever, there is nothing which would say, which would uh, point, reveal that this device was hacked unless it's really what uh, the criminals, the attackers want. So they can be hacked, compromised, and still work and just do their work in background. And their work in this case is uh, infecting with ransomware, doing DDoSes, and so on. And there is plenty of them. There is more than one device per human uh, being on planet. So that's just a lot of them. OK, so um, why? it's easier to compromise these devices. I've already said that they cannot defend themselves. These devices very often are matchbox size and with low computing power, so they don't have antivirus, they don't have seven layers uh, firewall, and just cannot defend themselves. Uh, often, often they just work, operate in so-called trusted network. So many ma manufacturers say, oh, our device is meant to work only in your uh, home. So if you have your network encrypted, you don't, have, you don't need additional encryption on our devices. But that's most of the time not true, because in that way, if you hack one because of whatever reason, you can have access to all of them because they send their credentials just in plain text. So that's just, just easy. Uh, so easy configuration is also their selling point. And because your grandma cannot be just, she cannot just configure it. Uh, the device, so it must work just out of the box. And to set up, we know that to set up security, there is some work to be done. And manufacturers, in most of the cases, just neglect it and try to skip this point because otherwise they will not sell. Uh, another two reasons, two stories, one about Jack, a web developer, which has, who has not much experience, uh, is now IoT device coder. So this reveals first problem. At the time, like five or six million developers work on IoT devices. And there is need for more. And if the market is so, it cannot be demanding because there's just no experienced workforce. So people with, with no real experience, and especially no real experience in secure coding, they still do it because there is no one else. And similar story with George, who was electrician on, in the factory floor, and they, they just shipped to him a ton of connected light bulbs and told them to to install them and nothing else, right? So again, lack of experience, lack of trained staff, um, it's, it's the reason why this is easy to compromise because of first, uh, not code of not a great um, of the quality and no experience to configure and deploy them correctly. Uh, Again, I'm just out of luck officially now. So to 
with less power that goes to sleep or something like that? I don't know, I believe so, but I'm not sure. Okay, so I think we are receiving now another lesson of history and another great uh, researcher, Mr. Craig Hafner, said that we are repeating every single problem from security, from computing even uh, now in embedded device. So we kind of know almost everything about computing, but then there came embedded device and for some reason we just forgot everything and I think it's also frightening. So what are now to just summarize or uh, sum up the threats which come generally from Internet of Device because we had some examples, now to let's just do some theory. They have impact or treat our privacy, surveillance and security. So privacy would be that most, okay, some of the devices even like TVs, uh, doorbells or, and so on, they listen to us, they look at us just to listen to our voice, voice commands, to see our gestures. But what happens with this data? Can you be sure that that's not even about privacy in terms of having this data by company behind this, uh, uh, these devices? But because that's, that's, that's for sure and that's according to privacy policy we agree to. But what if these devices are hacked? They can watch us and listen to us and they can sell this data for some reason. And then, uh, like uh, unauthorized uh, surveillance, there was one example that there were drone used to inspect um, elevation of high buildings, but how do we know that these drones were not hacked and used to peeping on uh, the inhabitants of this building, for example? And security in this most common uh, meaning, like IoT devices are present, for example, in street lights sometimes. And what if they are hacked, compromised, or just malfunctioning? They can literally lead to disasters sometimes. So general threats from IoT devices are like this. They allow to recognize topology of networks. And if you have anything to do with networks or, or security, you know that, that that's very efficient weapon against networks and organizations. Um, they can make easier to penetrate networks also. Because if you are able to hack, let's say, uh, camera, industrial camera of company, which is outside of their buildings, maybe on the fence or somewhere there. If you are able to hack it, sometimes even with uh, physical access, and it's connected to corporate network, as uh, it was already said, it is possible, uh, then they have easier access to, to, to companies, to networks. And also, denial of sleep attacks, which are special kind of attacks. Uh, it was, let's say, invented uh, because of these IoT devices, especially in smart homes, that you just uh, make these devices never rest. So they drain battery and malfunction or, or not function at all in, in the result. Local threats. So they, as I already said, can recognize our habits and our lifestyle and gather this information, sell this information uh, for whatever reason to whomever, and that's already scary. Uh, medical information, like our um, 
uh, heart rate trackers, our uh, step trackers and step counters, sorry. Uh, this information can be sold for real money to insurance comp uh, companies, for example, and what else? Uh, this was already told that denial of service on household devices just to disable them, uh, to make them pay, to make users pay, for example, for, for uh, putting you back to work. And as already said before, uh, it's not obvious that they were hacked. So they may be hacked and disclose this just after weeks or months even in the very worst moment, like during the heat wave, for example, and this is, for example, more likely that you pay for enabling your air condition during heat wave. Um, so these were local threats, what are public? Uh, so I already mentioned paralysis of public infrastructure, and this may be, again, street lights, uh, this may be sometimes uh, we know that uh, on buses, uh, like public transportations, there are computers now, and through these computers, through these networks, uh, drivers can receive orders. What if they just get ridiculous orders to all to to go go with all buses to the same street or so on? This may be a disaster. Uh, enabling many devices at the same time, like it, I think it happened already or there was attempt to do so, enabling uh, many, many air conditioners uh, at the same time, which was about to lead to blackout because of uh, higher energy consumption. Uh, another topic is frauds on media consumption, like uh, forging uh, the measurements uh, from your water or electricity um, uh, consumption. Unauthorized sur surveillance also hacked our IP cameras on, uh, at home, hacked sur surveillance cameras in city and or a factory or whatever. Was it hacked or what? What did you do? What method? Did you get some uh, some, some power? Okay, as I said, most of the time we will not even notice because this is how this device works. This is how they're meant to be. Sometimes they are just there and they are meant to forget about them. They do their job, but sometimes if they're compromised, then don't. So this is a game, but maybe. Maybe we are not that far away from this. Uh, so finally, I will try to tell you what can you do to make it better, at least a little. So to secure Internet of Things device, you need to answer some questions. What does it do besides its uh, obvious function? So what are the connections? What are the transportation layers? Uh, like, what are the destinations of the networking? Is it lo only local, is it cloud, or whatever? Separation, so I already mentioned that most of these devices are meant to function in so-called local networks. But is it true, most, uh, is it true every time, or even if there's local networks, do they behave like they should? Or maybe they export too much to cloud then? And lifetime and life cycle of the uh, devices. And you need to know these things about every each device you want to protect. So mm -hmm. I'm really not sure what to do now. Yeah, neither am I. 
I will stop the one using this one. Okay, uh, so in one way or another, I already mentioned all of this, but this is a summary. So first of all, if you want your device to be secure, and this is also uh, both on the manufacturer or consumer perspective, you need to care about security of, on each state of development. This is more on the manufacturer uh, side. So you need better code. If you cannot afford best specialist, at least use some well-known tested frameworks. So there is lower possibility of bugs and failures, or at least obvious bugs. Uh, standards for interoperability. This is important because there are so many devices now on market, and they use so many different uh, operating systems, transportation layers, like some use Wi-Fi, some use Bluetooth, some use Z-Wave, some, uh, some use uh, even others, uh, NFC, Zigbee, and so on. There's just plenty of them. But at some point, a consumer wants to put them together to, to work together. And this leads to create some inter operability layers, and these are sometimes, or from my experience most of the time, just bad code. This is coded in inside of a company which has um, ad hoc needs to just put something together, so they hack some Python scripts together just to make it work with no uh, security in mind, with no uh, testing in mind, and so on. They just want quickly to work. So if we had some standards there, we could avoid some of these problems at least. Certifications. Uh, so IoT is still a new topic, but there is no discussion at this moment, at least nothing serious, about certifications. We all knew, know that, for example, our uh, Credit cards terminals are certified and they wouldn't be allowed on market if they are not certified. Maybe we should have something like this with IoT devices, so to be sure that they just safe or reasonably safe. Um, so there is also some special kind of uh, embedded or IoT devices which are so tiny and their function is so uh, maybe not minor, but uh, little, that they can just be disposable. So if we can create very low-cost device, very inexpensive devices, this could solve some problems with updates, for example. If, um, if we have some bug in this device, we can just throw it out and buy a new one. Uh, and that's one of the... Um, one of the solutions to updates sometimes, if we can afford this, of course. And fog computing, this is something between local computing and cloud computing. So instead of connecting all our little devices uh, to cloud directly, there is this fog computing, which uh, is something on, for example, organization level. So instead of directly connecting to, to cloud, we have some uh, intermediate layer where all our maybe less secure devices are connected and these are never exposed to outside world. That may also be sometimes a solution. So there are also some other ways. I put them together on another slide because personally I don't agree with them, but some people just ad advise them. So dedicated closed system, this is more or less security uh, by obs obscurity. Again, with the same with the transportation layers, but at, at some point it might help, but this is only if the device is probably not very popular among users 
or just inside organizations on, and so on. But you, you can go for it if it works for you. So if we know what we need to do, we also need to do what prevents us from doing it. So bugs are normal. Everybody who works with software knows that there are bugs and there are always going to be bugs. And to solve them, you just provide updates. But that's really tricky sometimes, especially in the embedded devices where there is maybe not all the time connection, internet connection. Maybe there is sometimes not even enough uh, computing power to, to download this uh, or, or unpack the, the, these uh, updates. Sometimes there might be not enough computing power to decrypt them or, or, or check signature. So you have to take it into account. If you are going to provide updates, and you should, you should really provide updates, you need to ensure that you can do it in proper way, like not brick devices, like not accepting not signed um, updates and so on. Uh, so again, fourth time probably, these devices cannot defend themselves, so uh, you have to uh, worry about them. You have to keep an eye on them in different ways. So maybe putting them all together in some protected uh, parts of network, um, maybe not to expose them directly to cloud and so on. Uh, you need to know how they work, what are the drawbacks, what are the limitations to know how to care about them. And this is very often neglected somehow, even in organizations, not only at home. Um, and devices are publicly available, so direct physical access when you can just come with your wires, with your debugger and whatever. Uh, it's really hard to, to protect devices against this kind of attacks, but at least if it's, for example, safety infrastructure, you should try. Uh, again, lack of this compatibility doesn't help. I will not go through it again. Uh, users should not be forced to provide their own ad hoc compatibility. Um, lack of experienced professionals, another time I'm repeating myself. So if you cannot afford specialists, maybe just use, try to use something which is tested. Uh, other problems, and these are abstract somehow, but also important. So we have centralized electricity grids. So if you want a device to be long running, it either has to have uh, good battery or be really uh, good at power saving and so on. So you cannot just put your device in the middle of the desert. So that, that also needs to be keep in mind. Uh, dependence of smartphones. Some gadgets, especially wearable, depend on phones, and this also is kind of a, maybe not problem, but something, uh, something you need to uh, care about, and something which uh, is completely different, distinct topic, ethical and legal problems, I believe, today or tomorrow there is going to be presentation fully on this topic. I'm just going to say that there are these problems uh, with IoT, ethical and legal. Um, for example, uh, NSA uh, director, he just admitted some time uh, last year that NSA is uh, hacking biometrical devices to pre prevent, to, to help uh, preventing uh, terrorism, or there are there are different uh, examples. Like for example, is police allowed to uh, s to request information from our home devices, for example, to testify for or against us if we really had our alibi, like were we at home or we were not? What, what do our devices say, say about this? Uh, 
um, or some others like can our uh, coffee machine disclose our over uh, usage of coffee to insurance company or can our uh, step counter disclose that we just moved to to to, few, to, to our doctor or, or whatever so this this is completely uh, distinct but also needs to be taken into account and really quick uh, I think we have little time so maybe let's not repeat most of this information, but I just wanted to say that you can always, you have some impact on this situation and you can just vote with your wallet. Like in Automotive, it was last year or uh, the, the even previous one, uh, that there was survey among uh, car owners or uh, future owners and most of them said that they care about security and they are afraid that their car might be hacked. So automotive in US, there was alliance there, they just have their own manuals, they have the uh, conferences to speak about this, to, to have good um, um, overview of this topic and after this survey, they really started to care somehow. Uh, there are some uh, tries to do it from legal way, like this European Network and Information Security Agency. This is a very new one. Uh, they admit that there needs to be some law uh, behind usage of this uh, IoT and other connected devices, but there is only some proposals, you can uh, see them. Also, this Alliance of Internet of Things Innovation, this is um, initiated by European Commission uh, as well, but this is, um, this is non-commercial organization, but this is supported for like half of the Fortune 500 companies. Uh, there are not uh, strictly for security, but at least there is something which uh, consolidates and uh, to work together for, for, for better uh, IoT devices. And there are some guidebooks like uh, what should you do to have your devices more secure. You can also read them if you are interested in details. And that's it. I'm uh, not sure if we have time for questions, but thank you for your attention anyways. We have? Yeah, one or two. Okay, so we, we have some time, so if you have some questions, please ask them now. Okay. Sorry, I almost cannot hear you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, if I understood correctly, this was uh, somehow a uh, discussion started about uh, certification possibilities and uh, concerns about it. Uh, so, yeah, I agree that uh, certification is something which takes much, much time, but in the end, this is only way you could force something. Because, uh, as I said before, if manufacturers are left on their own and they just uh, sell their, their devices and the one which is easier to use is sold over the other, and if there is no need 
for certification, there is no need to keep some level of security. Uh, this is probably not going to happen unless there are some serious uh, consequences of having no security. Uh, so yes, I agree that this takes time uh, and we may be running out of time, but better sooner than, uh, I mean better later than never. And in the meantime, maybe some producers, some manufacturers can do on their own, but at some point, maybe in two years, maybe in five years, there is some baseline to stick to. That's what I believe. So now we just have to vote with our wallets to impose something on the manufacturers when the legal parties like European Union well, actually, they are not at this moment, but maybe they will, and that would be a uh, debatable but better situation. For now, it's rather up to us and to say or to, to show which devices we choose or, or not. Okay. Um, if I knew, maybe we wouldn't be here because uh, there would be no problem with IoT security. But if you cannot convince them to sacrifice, to devote some resources, like um, man hours, maybe you can try to convince them to use something which is already tested, like frameworks or uh, operating systems which are meant to, to be, uh, to be uh, generic and secure. I have some of the, this, some of these are protocols, some of these are even full-blown operating systems. Some of them are just frameworks, but if the company doesn't want to devote all the resources to security, maybe that's the idea, to, to use something which is already somehow tested and somehow more secure. Does it help some, somehow? <laughs> Yep. Okay, so thank you very much. Have a nice day.